Okay, the next section. So let's take y equals f of x again, and let's take the point on a graph, and let's do 2, 2, 2, 2. And now let's do a vertical expansion equaling 2. So I'll take my equation, my function y equals f of x, and I'll want to do a vertical expansion by 2. So I know I want to substitute the opposite operation for the variable. And the opposite operation for the variable of an expansion of 2 is substituting 1 half y in for y. So I'm going to take my equation and I'm going to put 1 half y in for y. Simply taking the variable y and substituting y, 1 half y in for y will do a vertical expansion of 2. That is a fine equation. If I want to, I can times both sides by 2 and I'll get the equation y equals 2 f of x, which is also a fine equation. But if you just get lazy and just put twos in front of things when you want to multiply them, when you want to multiply the y value by two, it's dangerous. I'd much rather you do it properly, then when it gets much more difficult, want to understand the foundations. So that is going to simply take the y values and multiply them by two. So if I have a y value of two and I multiply that by two, that becomes four, and now I have the point two comma four. So, if I have the equation y equals f of x, and I want to do a, excuse me, let's do the last thing in proper notation. So we write the point down, 2 comma 2. We say we're going to do a vertical expansion equaling 2, which means we're going to multiply the y values by 2, which means we get the point 2, 4. And remember, we want to do it very tabular-like, so it's very nice and clean. In the future, we want to be able to do more and more points. So, excuse me, now let's take y equals f of x, and now let's take the function g of x. Who cares? We're just calling it something different. Equals f of 2x. So what will that do? Or if they told you to do something, that would be done. So that is a horizontal compression equaling 1 half. If I wanted to do a horizontal compression equaling 1 half, I would simply take x and I would substitute the opposite operation for the variable. x equals 2x, which means that would be a horizontal compression equaling 1 half. My old point was 2 comma 2, the original point that we started with. I underline the point and a horizontal compression of a half is going to multiply the x value by a half and 2 times 1 half is simply 1. Remember, very tabular, very lines and columns, very clean. We're going to do it very fast in the future and we want to have this set up already. So we'd take our old point, 2 comma 2, and we would horizontally compress it by a half, and we would have the new point, 1 comma 2. So again, watch the theory, understand why we substitute the opposite operation for the variable, because if I have y equals f of x, and I want to say that I want to do a horizontal expansion equaling 2. Well, as we noticed from before when we were working on y, we substituted 1 half y in for y to do a vertical expansion by 2. So now if we're going to be doing a horizontal expansion of 2, well, we obviously do the same thing to the x value and make x equaling 1 half x the same method as we did for y, substituting the opposite operation for the variable. Let's call it h of x, who cares? Equals f of 1 half x. So if I want to do a horizontal expansion of 2, I simply write the original point down, the one we started with in the first place, 2 comma 2.
I underline the point, and a horizontal expansion of two would be multiplying the y values by two, excuse me, the x values by two, horizontal expansion of two, multiplying the x values by two, two times two is four, and we have the point four two. Remember again, very tabular, and this time the point two two goes to the right two for our new point four comma two. So remembering, going back and forth, they might give you function notation, they might tell you to do something, you might have to do that to the function equation, you might have to do it to y equals like we've seen before, you might have to do it to a graph. They may give you a point on a graph and move the point and they may say give the new equation or what has happened, all sorts of stuff. Remember at the beginning I'm always going to read English sentences. So at the beginning of the last section, at the big last, the end of the first section of the first video 1.1 I read some English sentences at the bottom and those should look very familiar so I'm gonna read those again and I'm gonna circle in blue do exactly what you see outside of the brackets on the right hand side to the y value so that's if you see the two on the right hand side that is multiplying the y values by 2. Next sentence, do the opposite of what you see inside the brackets to the x value. So if I have g of x equals f of 2x, I do the opposite. So I would multiply all the x values by a half. Now, again, that same sentence applies to the h of x. Do the opposite of what you see inside the brackets to the x value. So if I see one half x attached to the variable, I know that that's a horizontal expansion of two. Now the last sentence, do the opposite of what you see on the left hand side to the y value. So if we go up a few to one half y equals f of x, well, it's attached to the variable, so we always do the opposite. So start to get feeling more comfortable with the operation attached to the variable because then it's the opposite. But y has the case where you can do algebra to add or subtract or multiply or divide to get it onto the right hand side. I prefer the two second English sentences because they are very poetic. The sentences make sense. They look very the same. The exact sentence words all line up all the way along the sentence where the first sentence is a little bit odd. So we're going to get very comfortable with both sentences. Okay, f of x, g of x, y equals all these different things. We're going to get comfortable working on them. So let's say we take the point. 3 comma 2, very familiar, 3 comma 2, and we call that x comma f of x, or a point on f of x. And we want to say find g of x. Well, let's say that g of x is equal to negative f of x. Well, what does that mean? Well, we know that if we put a negative in front of f of x, that's a vertical reflection. A vertical reflection. So we want to remember a vertical reflection vertically reflects the graph. So if we vertically reflect the graph, the x value stays and we're vertically reflecting the distance from the x-axis stays the same and we get our new point on the graph. And again we want to remember that if we're going to be working with these we want to write down the point that we have, we want to underline it, we want to say what we're going to do to it, and a vertical reflection as seen in the notes is just going to multiply the y value by negative 1 and 2 times negative 1 is simply negative 2. So we get the new point on the graph, 3, negative 2. They may give you a point on the graph, they may give you a function, they may give you a full graph with a whole line that you have to move the whole thing, or a V, or a parabola, or whichever it is. And if we want to do a vertical reflection, that's what we're going to do. If we have want to do it in variable notation, let's take y equals f of x. And if I want to do a vertical reflection, well, that means that I want to multiply all the y values by negative 1. So I simply substitute 
negative y in for y equals to f of x. And again, we can multiply and divide both sides by negative 1 and get y equals negative x. So working with function notation and working with variable notation, making sure that we can go back and forth very easily between them. So now let's say that g of x is no longer f of, f, f of negative f of x, and let's say g of x is equal to f of negative x. Well, that's attached to the x, so that's a horizontal reflection, simply multiplying the x values by negative 1. So if I take the point 3, 2, remember the original point that we started with, and I want to do a horizontal reflection. Remember, very tabular, I simply multiply the x value by negative 1. So if I have an x value of 3 and I multiply it by negative 1, I get negative 3, comma, 2. And that, a horizontal reflection, is going to horizontally reflect it, keeping the same y value and keeping the same distance away from the x y axis on the other side of the graph getting the point negative 3, 2, as we found just a second ago, doing a vertical reflection. So we've now seen up and down, left and right, translations. We've seen vertical compressions and expansions and horizontal compressions and expansions. And now we've seen vertical and horizontal reflections. We're now going to walk through function notation and graphs for the transformations where the same we did for the translations. A very similar word, translations, is left and right and up and down, and transformations includes translations, but is also compressions, expansions, and reflections. Okay, so let's take f of x equals x squared again. And let's ask ourselves, what's f of 3? And remember from previous, that means substitute 3 in for x. Therefore, f of 3 equals 9. But more importantly, substitute whatever we say f of in for x. So what if I say, what is f of 2x? So f of 2x. Well f of 2x, well, if I know that f of x was equal to x squared, and now I want to know what f of 2x is equal to, I simply substituted 2x on the left-hand side, so I'm going to substitute 2x on the right-hand side. And what did that do? Well, we took x and we substituted 2x, and I know if I substitute the opposite operation for the variable, that means that I want to do a horizontal compression equaling 1 half. Remember, they may tell you to do a horizontal compression of 1 half, and you have to substitute 2x in for x into the equation, and we get the new equation. f of x equals 2x all squared brackets around it. Keep in mind, grade 9 exponent laws. If we do 2x squared, we get 4x squared, which would be a 4 outside of the brackets, which is actually a vertical translation, but we're not going to get there yet. Keep in mind, it gets a little bit overlapping. So, this time let's do a vertical expansion equaling 2. So remember, in the notes, I'm going to go back and forth. Sometimes I'm going to start with the answer. Sometimes I'm going to start with the question. So, if I want to do a vertical expansion by 2, let's use function notation this time. So let's go back to y equals x squared. And if I want to do a vertical expansion of 2, well, that's y. And I'm simply going to substitute 1 half y in for y. So I'm going to do that. 1 half y equals x squared. And that is a valid answer. If I want to multiply both sides by 2 and get 2x squared, that is also a valid answer. But be careful. If you are going to be lazy and just put a 2 in front, you have to be careful because you would actually have to put brackets around the function and distribute that 2 into the function. Much safer to do it properly and substitute the opposite operation for the variable, remembering if you times both sides by 2, obviously you have to times so I sides by 2 to the other stuff on the right hand side. So let's now let's take y equals x squared again. 
and this time let's do a vertical reflection. Well, that means we're going to take y and substitute negative y in for y. So if I do that, I get negative y equals x squared, which is a valid equation. Or I could multiply or divide both sides by negative 1 and get y equals negative x squared, as we saw from parabolas. Feel free to call that g of x if you like. g of x equals negative x squared. I don't like to focus too much on the notation. People worry too much about it and it gets them upset and they can't think as simple about it. So if you don't like the function notation, switch it over to variable notation. Work with it with variable notation and then convert it back to function notation at the end. Okay, let's take the function y equals x squared again. The reason why I keep using this function is because it's familiar from last year and we want to understand and have foundational staples. So, let's draw that graph off to the right. 0 squared is 0, 1 and negative 1 squared is 1, 2 and negative 2 squared is 4. So we can draw off that graph and call it y equals x squared. Now, what if we want to do a vertical expansion equaling 2? Well, we remember that we substitute the opposite operation for the variable, so that would be substituting, excuse me, substituting 1 half y in for y. So we can do that, 1 half y equals x squared, and that is a valid formula, or you may times both sides by 2 and get 2x squared. And I've already spoken enough about how much I want you to do it properly, but again, if you want to do it a little bit more lazy-like. So that, a vertical expansion of 2, is going to simply multiply all the y values by 2. So this y value is 0, when we multiply it by 2, it stays, it's an invariant point. If I take this point and I multiply the y value by 2, it has a y value of 1. And if I multiply it by 2, I have a y value of 2. And the same with this point over here. And then I get a much steeper, steeper parabola. Steeper because the y values were increased, not skinnier because the x values were not decreased. Then again, it overlaps a little bit. So now, Remember, we can go back and forth. They might give you the equation y equals x squared, and they might give you the equation y equals 2x squared, and you have to know that that was a vertical expansion of 2, or they might give you the equation, and you have to find the new equation in any form you want, or it will go back and forth between any different version of it. You want to be able to be comfortable doing all of them. Let's take y equals root x. So remember we graphed this one last time. 0, the square root of 0 is 0, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, and we get our sideways parabola shape. Now what if I want to do a horizontal compression equaling 1 half? Well, I always want to substitute the opposite operation for the variable, so I'm simply going to turn x into 2x. And if I take the equation, I say y equals root and substitute 2x in for x. That is my only version of this. There's no algebra I can do to isolate for y. It's already isolated. So with x, it's a little bit simpler. But either way, remember, substitute the opposite operation for the variable. So if I want to do a horizontal compression of a half, my x value here is 0. And if I times that by 1 half, it's still 0, and here my x value is 1, and if I times it by 1 half, I get there at 1 half, and if I have an x value of 4, and if I multiply 4 by 1 half, I get 2, and I get a horizontal compression, horizontally compressing this graph. Kind of looks like a little bit of a vertical expansion, and that's how what I spoke about before, it's a little bit overlapping and we can do different methods from different grades to go back and forth between the two. But once again, if we have an equation, remember substituting the opposite operation for the variable, you might get the equation y equals root x and they might give you the equation y equals root 2x.
2x and you might have to say that it was a horizontal compression of a half or substitute into the equation or you might be given the equation and have to say what has been done to it or work on the graph and vice versa. Okay, you guessed it. Y equals x squared. Let's draw that one really quickly. So remembering 0 squared 0, 1 and negative 1 squared is 1, 2 squared and negative 2 squared are both 4. And this time let's do a vertical reflection. A VR, a vertical reflection. So how do we do that? Well remember we substitute negative y in for y. So if I do that I get negative y equals x squared, a fine formula, or divide both sides by negative 1 and y equals negative x squared, a little bit more simpler looking formula. And from last year, we saw that if we want to do a vertical reflection, we're simply going to vertically reflect the graph, multiplying all the y values by negative 1. So this point, if we have a y value of 0, that point stays, it's invariant. If we have these points with y values of 1, they're simply going to multiply by negative 1 and have y values of negative 1, having the same distance away from the x-axis as they used to. And then these points with y values of 4, remember the x values do not change, and those are vertically reflected to now have a parabola facing downwards where the old parabola was y equals x squared and the new parabola is y equals negative x squared. Excuse me, negative x squared. Doing a vertical reflection, you might get a graph, you might have to say what it did to it, you may have to work on the equation, remembering going back and forth between all these different ways. Let's take the function y equals root x again, only because we've seen them before in grade 11, or if you've ever practiced just doing a table of values, the square root of 0 is 0, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2. Now let's do a horizontal reflection, a horizontal reflection, an hr. Well, that means that we want to horizontally reflect it, so we want to make all the x's negative, so we simply substitute negative x in for x, and we get the equation y equals negative root x. Keep in mind, I haven't planned out these videos too well, but sometimes, if we have an x value of 0, that point is invariant. This the x value is 1. If we horizontally reflect it, we have the same distance from the y-axis, horizontally reflecting it. And if we have an x value of 4 and we horizontally reflect it, we now have the same distance away from the y-axis of 4 again to have a parabola that goes out in the other direction. I'm going to draw that again down below. So a parabola that goes out in the other direction, a horizontal reflection, simply multiplying all the x values by negative 1. Okay, let's take another graph with the black and the red. And let's call the red y equals f of x and the black will be the transformation. So let's say y equals a f of x. We want it in this form. So I know that the red used to have a y value of 2 and now we have a y value of 4 which means that that was a vertical expansion equaling 2 going from red to black. And I can simply put a 2 in front of f of x. Now remember, that was the lazy way to do it. Remember, we could take the function y equals f of x, and we can put, excuse me, take the function y equals f of x, and we can put 1 half x, 1 half y, in for y and then multiply both sides by 2 and get the other equation. But both forms are fine. So that is a vertical expansion. Notice invariant points, points that don't change. A vertical expansion, the x-intercepts don't change because we're multiplying the y values by 
2 for a vertical expansion. And if we multiply 0 by 2, those don't change. So let's take a look at another graph. Again, we're going to be drawing the black. And remember, the black is a transformation of the red. So let's call the red y equals f of x. And wonder what the black is. Now this time, let's give it in this form, y equals f of bx. And we know that if I want to go from red to black, well, I have an x value of 1, and it has to go to an x value of 2, and I have a x value of 2, and it has to go to an x value of 4. So that means that it's a horizontal expansion equaling 2, and I always know that I'm going to substitute the opposite operation for the variable. So y equals f of 1 half x. Notice I've used extra brackets here. So, completely unnecessary for now, substituting 1 half x in for x, turning x into 1 half x, substituting the opposite operation for the variable as we did above with y, and then multiplying both sides by 2 as we did above, or with x, we simply leave it in that form. So let's take a nice simple example again. We're going to do this in the middle of the page this time, just the way it's going to lay out. And let's take two new black functions, transformed from the red function. So if I call the red function y equals f of x, I know that the horizontal, trans horizontal reflection, this one, that means that I would put negative x in for x. So I'm not going to write it all down this time. And then if I want to do a vertical reflection, I put a negative in front of f of x. y equals negative f of x. So a horizontal reflection simply putting negative x in for x and a vertical reflection simply putting a negative in front of f of x and keep in mind we should have followed the notes and put a negative y in for y and then divided both sides by negative one but i will leave it there now we're going to move on to combining sections 1.1 and 1.2 whereby we do translations and transformations all together in the same order. Points, then functions, then y equals, then graphs, etc.